New graphics cards used to be exciting, but now we've got supers and XTs, and it's hard to know if they're any good, especially when the stack is now huge and the price to performance is not always what you want it to be. AMD has come out with their new 7600 XT, and we've got Power Colors Hellhound Edition, which is actually pretty cool. It's a pretty badass looking box, I'm not gonna lie. It reminds me of the old school days when there used to be like anime girls and weird ass aliens and stuff on the boxes and on the cards, those were great. The RX 7600 XT has some pretty cool things going for it, like 16 gigs of VRAM, and 100 more megahertz on the clock, and that's it. That's like literally all it's got going for it. We've got 32 compute units, 64 AI accelerators, 32 ray accelerators, offering 22.57 teflops of performance power. It's also releasing alongside AMD's frame generation competitor, Fluid Motion Frames, which we're gonna try in a little bit here. Overall, while this is an interesting release, it's kind of disappointing because we have been given something that we've all been clamoring for a year later, but nothing else. And I just can't help but wonder if they couldn't have done a better job at the price that they're releasing this at. What's cool about the Hellhound edition is it's got a little OC versus silent BIOS. You can swap that to whatever you want. I'm gonna switch it back to OC because uh, let's be real, this thing isn't gonna get that loud when playing games. And then on top of that, it's also got an LED switch I'm gonna make sure that is set to on when I plug it in later, because I wanna see how good the RGB is, if it's RGB at all. It's a two slot card, nice and slim, which is great these days, considering how chunky everything's getting. We've got what looks like three DisplayPort 2.1s and one HDMI 2.1. This is a really minor gripe, but I actually hate that they've got like DisplayPort HDMI and then two more DisplayPorts. Like, why can't you just have like three DP and then one HDMI? But at least AMD is giving us DP 2.1. Not that this thing is gonna take advantage of UHBR 10 or anything like that. They advertise that it's gonna draw about 190 watts, but we did see spikes of up to 230 or 240 watts under extreme heavy loads. Now, that's fine. They're recommending a 600 watt power supply, so even if you have a generally beefy CPU, you should be okay. Let's take a look at the size. For our test comparisons, we went with an ARC A770, because it's a little cheaper and also has 16 gigs of VRAM, and a 4060 Ti from NVIDIA. For a mid-range card, this is about the size I'd expect. I'm actually still running a 1660 Ti in my stream computer, and uh, it's about the same size, a little dual slot, two fan card that doesn't take up a lot of space, fits in most form factor PCs. Our ARC card is what, another like 30 millimeters or something? It's nothing to scoff at. The last thing you wanna do is buy a card take it home and then not be able to fit it in your computer. I really do like how sleek these A770s look and feel though, not gonna lie. Well, that's not what we're talking about today. We're talking about the RX 7600 XT. And I kind of like this one too. Uh, the Hellhound Edition is pretty dope with these cool see-through fans. I'm guessing that these are gonna light up. I'm really hoping that they're gonna light up because that would look absolutely sick. Otherwise, it's pretty bog standard in terms of card height these days, as well as uh, all of your other dimensions. Now, the 4060 Ti 16 gig and the RX 7600 XT are both on a 128-bit bus. The ARC A770 is on 256, so if you like that little bit of extra memory bandwidth, then there's kind of a clear winner here. But how does that translate to actual performance? We'll find out after a message from our sponsor, Jawa. They make getting rid of your old graphics card easy by just buying it off you themselves. All you have to do is go through the steps on their site to get an instant quote and a free shipping label. Most sellers will get paid within one business day after Jawa receives the part. And if you're looking to upgrade your graphics card, you can find big savings on their marketplace of cards from users just like you. Each card is carefully inspected and quality checked to make sure they're in working condition. And it's not just graphics cards. Jawa makes it easy to sell your old rig or buy one from an experienced builder. Sell your old card the easy way and offset the cost of a new one by checking out the link in the description below. All right, that was easy thanks to no 16 pin power connector, just an eight and a six pin, nice and simple. For our three lighting modes, we've got ice blue, off, if you don't want any colors, or purple. I really like the purple, that's definitely for me. We're gonna stick to that. Cyberpunk 1080p FSR turned off, so it's all native. We're getting 100 frames per second, which is actually not too bad. But you know what? It could be better. FMF is basically just AMD's answer to NVIDIA's frame generation. 
So we're gonna enable FMF and instantly, oh my gosh, 180 frames a second. It's not quite doubling, but that is an enormous leap. It's hard to say if I'm actually seeing any weird artifacting or anything that isn't just kind of already in Cyberpunk, but even quickly flicking around like this icon here isn't doing that same kind of artifact in that early frame generation had. Let's see what it can do if we up the resolution. Ooh, if we're down to like 60 on average, 63, 61. Okay, not great. It's definitely still playable. Let me turn on FSR. It gets a little better with FSR, but it's still not great. 88, 90 frames a second. And now I can really start to see some just kind of growth. Actually, FSR is not terrible. I feel like it's gotten better. It's also a little unfair. We're using a 4K screen that's pretty big and scaling it down just isn't quite what we should be doing. So it plays games, but how well? Let's talk performance. In 1080p, Atomic Heart obviously loses to our 16 gig 4060 Ti, but it does slightly better than the Arc A770 in the 1% lows. And moving up to 1440p, we see basically the same thing. In Cyberpunk at 1080p, our Arc A770 loses once more, but this time the averages is quite stark, despite our 1% lows being almost the same. In Cyberpunk at 1440p, our RTX 4060 Ti actually really starts to lose ground here. The 7600 XT actually beats it in 1% lows by one FPS and loses in averages by only three. Moving on to F1 2023 at 1080p, our ARC card really starts to struggle here, losing 28% performance compared against our 7600 XT. The race also gets a little tighter between our 4060 Ti and the 7600 XT with only a 10 FPS difference in our 1% lows. What it really boils down to is price to performance. This card costs $330. And the reality is, while it has fewer gigs of VRAM at only 12 gigs instead of 16, a 6700 XT can be bought both brand new or used for about the same price as this card, maybe even cheaper than that. So unfortunately, it's just kind of a failure. And I don't really understand why you'd buy a 7600 XT when unlike Nvidia, where they're kind of gaining frame gen and DLSS 3.0 behind the 40 series cards, AMD's not doing that. The 6000 series can do it too. So I don't get it. It took them a year to come out with this and it's just kind of a non-starter. I don't see the point in getting one. And uh, frankly, I'm a little disappointed. There are some minor benefits. If you're into machine learning, or maybe if you just really need that 16 gigs of VRAM for video editing or something along those lines, and you can't afford a 4060 Ti, maybe you get this guy. But even then, I'm kind of leaning towards Intel and going with an Arc A770 for also around the same price as this. Overall, it's just kind of a bad time to be a budget gamer. The cards on the low end from everyone just aren't performing the way they used to. Thanks for watching Short Circuit. If you want to check out another video card, check out the 4070 Super. That's kind of doing better, but it costs a lot more money.